Today I'm going to show you how to make your very own hyperslide. So I'm starting here in my Google Drive, that's drive.google.com, and then I'm going to go to the red button here and select New Google Slides. When it opens into the new slides, I'm going to go ahead and give my new project a title. I'm getting ready to talk about European Explorers with my World History 2 students. Consider adding the word original or master to your hyperdoc or your hyperslide so that if you do send it out and it's not through Google Classroom, you can designate which one is the original that you created versus the ones that your students um, answered questions on or the ones that you sent out to colleagues. All right, so two different choices. If you liked the idea of using one of these to flip a lesson, then you would immediately go to layout and choose title only. You would only need this one slide. I want to create a hyperslides activity that goes through each of the different explorers. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the original, um, put a little color, put a little theme to it. Let's see. I am definitely crushing on this template right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this. And maybe I can spell. Okay, European Explorers. Um, next, I go to the plus sign, and I'm going to add a new. I could just easily delete, click to add text. Um, I, I like not having my layout cluttered because I know I'm going to do something that's not within their template, so I'm going to switch it over to title only. Um, I also like to make these color block titles so that they can tell the difference between title and my text or questions. So to do that, I one click selected the text box. I have the blue outline around it. And now I'm going to go up to my paint bucket fill color and I'm going to pick purple. I'm going to go to my font and just one shade in from white to keep it interesting. Um, and then make sure it's bold. I'm going to type in my title. Um, Christopher Columbus is the first one we're going to talk about, so I have my title and I'm ready to go. This is how easy it is to make a hyperslide. It's just text boxes. So I go up here to the text box tool, a box with the letter T in it. I click on that and then I use the crosshairs to draw my text box. Again, I'm going to go to fill color. Um, I want it purple, but that's so dark. If I go back up here with that purple selected onto custom, I can slide that up a bit and kind of keep it in the same color family, but then it's lighter. Give it a nice distinct outline, keep it organized. Um, that way it's just a little bit easier to read my text. And the title here is going to be who is Christopher Columbus? I selected that, I'm going to align it. And then I'm gonna hit enter a whole bunch of times to leave space for the image and the videos that I wanna add. And then I'm going to go back. Now one of the things I love, I just wanna pause for a second and talk about this. One of the things I love about having students interacting with a Google slide or a hyper slide instead of it just being projected up on the whiteboard is that I don't have to worry about how small the font is. Can a student see this from the back corner of the room? This is in front of them on their iPad, on their laptop. So if I need to make the font smaller or I need to minimize that video size so I can fit it in a space, it's okay. The student has it in front of them. They can change the font if they need it larger. When If, if it's a video, you can just click full screen. Um, so it really kind of frees up the limitations of having to make sure it's large for a presentation. Okay, back to what I was talking about. Um, where is Christopher Columbus from? So I have my questions, and then clearly I haven't put too much thought in advance on this. The video I pulled up doesn't really match those questions at all. Um, so I'm going to do this one more time, fill color. Now I have it saved here, I don't have to go find that specific color again. My two point line, there we go.
center that up. Okay. I'm just going to kind of scoot this around, make it look a little more, take up a little more space. All right, so let's talk about how to insert primary source images or just images in general, or you can add a video. So a bunch of different options that I want to make sure you're aware of. You can do it the old fashioned way. You go to insert image and you can upload it. You can choose the URL of a link. You can do a search right here within the drive. You don't have to leave anything. Um, if you had something saved that you've already used in your Google Drive or something off your desktop, you could just drag and drop it, okay? Um, you can probably see the top of my screen where I'd pre-chosen something, but it's just easier here, I think, to search for what I want. That guy looks good. The image you highlighted is found here. So then I can drag, grab a corner, to minimize so that he fits within my space. Remember, I have a little bit of wiggle room because I don't have to necessarily make it a certain size. And then I'm going to hit enter so that it fits. Another interesting option, let me scoot you over there, Chrissy boy. Okay, so I can also go to Tools Research. And this is a good tool for your students to know about. It automatically searches the web for you right here in the corner. Um, and I want to change it so that I'm only looking at images. And then I can find another. And I just drag and drop it right here. And if you were doing this, let me see. I know it works in a dock. Let me check to make sure it works here too. I'm sure you guys already know this, that I can go back to this if I go back to this picture and click on it, no, never mind. In a doc, if you did that, it would give you an option to cite it so that you can teach students about citing their sources. Um, but it's automatically hyperlinked, so I guess it's the same. All right, now let's talk about how to add a video. Go to Insert Video. You'll notice, though, that at this point, you, YouTube is your only option, which is fine because YouTube has a bunch of options, but um, to search it directly that way, um, it's only YouTube right now. You could type in something and it'll again search for you right here. Maybe there's a, a crash course or something that you're interested in. And you can go through and scroll. And if I wanted to preview it, I could preview it right here because you know you have to preview it. And I can preview it right here and I don't have to leave my Google Slides. It saves me a couple steps. Um, and that's not really one I want, so I'm going to pause this one. And I'm actually, I think I do like that one. I'll go back and watch it later. Um, but that would be another option. But I know I want to use the video that I made. So I'm going to click over here to URL. And I've already gone to my YouTube page and pulled up the video that I want to insert. And if you go down here to share, and you click on that, I'm just going to copy the link. I did Command C. You could also just right click, copy, go back, right click, paste. Or command V. <laughs> Whoo, that's a that's a thumbnail image right there. Okay, so I select that, and it sends it, and we're good to go. If I wanted to add questions, there it would be. So you generally get the idea. It's just a bunch of text boxes that I've added color to, and then you insert. Um, pictures or video or question right on top of it. If for some reason um, the text box shows up on top of your image, all you have to do is right click order and send it on back and then your video pops right back up. Sometimes the kids will accidentally do that and that's how to fix it. So it comes time to share this out with my students. Probably the easiest is going through Google Classroom. Um, I can do that real quick. Classroom. And just using the options that they have, um, Google Classroom defaults to all these wonderful options. This is not the same, but a draft one that I've been practicing with. And you can see that when you attach a project, you can have students view file, which means everybody you send it to is viewing the one document. It works like a PDF. You can do students edit file, which really scares me because when you do that, all the students can edit one document. And there are some collaborative activities where we do that. Um, 
but anybody who has access to the link can edit my original, which means I lose my template. If I do something like this, I usually make a copy and share that copy and I keep my original safe and clean and ready to use next year. Um, just be real careful with all students being able to edit the one file. I almost always default to make a copy for each student. It's like a digital Xerox. Um, students, especially on a hyperslide, are able to answer their own questions and you don't have the smarty britches in the back of the room doing the work for everybody else. That would be my preference. And then you click assign and your shared settings are done. But let's say you're making something that you want to, since you can embed a Google slide, you want to embed your hyperslide on a website or um, you're just emailing a link um, to a homebound student and it's not something through Google Classroom. You are not choosing to use Google Classroom. What you would do then is you need to make sure your, your share settings are set up appropriately. Um, this one at this point is only shared through me. If I was to send this link to anybody, they would have to request permission. So the first thing I need to do is open it up. I need to wait patiently. Um, and when it opens up, I'm going to go ahead and click on advanced and I want to change that it's private. The two share settings that I use almost exclusively are on anybody who has this link with a RCPS login versus on anybody with this link regardless of an RCPS login. Um, keeping things more secure, this is definitely the option that keeps your documents secure within the county and they're not floating to anybody out there. Um, although you do have to have access to the link, parents would not be able to view this. And I don't know if it's just something I'm doing wrong, but I've had some problems with the students.rockingham.k12.va.us accessing some things. And I don't know if that's a me issue, if it's their issue. Sometimes it's just easier for anyone with the link. No login required. Um, sometimes that login can be pretty cumbersome. But you can see it defaults to that PDF view only mode. There is no copy mode. Um, it's only view. Everybody can view the document or everybody can edit the document. I'm going to go ahead and change it over to edit. And I want to prevent my editors from changing access. Um, I want my students to be able to print and copy, so I'm going to save these changes. Now, the coolest part. If I go back to the top, I get this nice, simple little web address up here. Do you see how it says edit? It defaults to edit. But I can go in here and type in the word copy. And if I highlight this whole thing, right click, copy, or command C, and I email this to a parent or to a student, or I embed this into a hyperdoc, which I often do, or if this was their notes and I wanted their notes to be within my hyper slides, they wanted to read the notes and watch the video, I would take the web address, I would make sure my share settings allowed the students to access it, and then change it to copy, and it forces you to make a copy. This also works in view mode. So a way to send it as a PDF, or send it in an edit mode, or send it in a copy mode. All Google app websites end in these three options. And then I think you're good to go.